let us pray. Let's commit our gathering together in this Easter retreat into the hand of God. Would you like to bring your heart before the Lord? God has come and you need to present yourself. Will you register your presence before the Lord in this meeting? Ask him that he will help your heart. Our heart must not fail us at this moment. Your heart must not be casual. You have come to the presence of the Lord. You have come to receive. There is a package that the Lord has prepared particularly for you. Please pray now. Let's ask the Lord, bring us all of that that you have prepared for me. Let it be delivered. Pray that your heart will not be frivolous. Pray that your heart will be stable before the Lord. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask him to help our hearts. Lord, help our hearts. Having brought us to yourself in this retreat, Lord, that which you have prepared from the foundation of the world for this time. Oh, Lord, don't let me miss it. Let's pray. Wherever you are, please pray. Call on God that the Lord will help you. Help my heart. Help my heart. Prepare my heart to receive all that you have prepared in this meeting. Let's pray that nothing will hinder us. That which God is bringing to us at this time. Lord, let nothing hinder. There shall be no distraction. No call from anywhere. Nothing will distract me. Nothing will distract my heart. With what God has come to do at this time, Holy Spirit, please come and help my heart. Help my heart. Help everyone that is listening. Help everyone that is viewed from whatever part of the world. Please help our heart. Make our heart to be stable. Let's pray for our network that the Lord will take control. The network will be stable. You will hear well. You will see well. All that God is bringing at this time, you will not miss out. Pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are asking that, Lord, at this time, the network will be stable. The network will cooperate. And all that God is bringing, none of us will miss out. Lord, we are pleading with you that in this time, our network, the airwave will cooperate. The connectivity will be perfect. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord for a stable network in the name of Jesus. We will need to pray now that as the message, the word of God will be coming to us, that God is going to uh, season it with power. It will break every boundary of your heart. Your heart will not be the reason why the word of God will be limited. I want you to pray that the word of God will be seasoned with power. As God's servant will be bringing his word, let's pray that the Lord will enable his word. The word of God will be enabled among us. The word of God will be enabled at this time. The days of this meeting, the word of God will come on in that, in the name of Jesus. Let's talk to God. Let's ask him that the word will come with power, seasoned with authority, breaking barriers, breaking barriers, breaking yoke of bondage. This is a season, a season of great visitation. Ask the Lord that this visitation will not elude you. It will not elude your household. Wherever you are sitting together to even listening to the word of God, pray that nothing, nothing will end that. The word of God will come to you. The word of God will come particularly to you. Let's ask the Lord. This word has a location. It has been directed to you. That's why you are hearing us now. Pray that nothing will divert you, will divert your attention. Nothing will hinder the free flow of the word of God. Pray that God's servant today, as he brings forth the word of God, will be helped. Let's ask him to help his servant, even as the word of God will come to us. Can we give thanks to the Lord? Because he has heard us. Let's thank him that he will take control of the day. He will help us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Lord and our God, we thank you at this moment, bringing us to your presence. Lord, and uh, causing that at this time of Easter, oh, you have made provision for each of our lives, 
to be helped and to be fed with the word of God. We commit this, our sitting together in these few days to your hand. We ask that you will take charge. You will take preeminence over our heart and over everything that can hinder. You will not allow it to permit this meeting in the name of Jesus. Cause us to be stable, cause our network to be stable. Cause your will to be done in this meeting. There shall be mighty harvest, mighty deliverance as the word of God comfort in Jesus' name. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We'd like to welcome you to this special retreat during this Easter period. The Easter period is a very special period that the scriptures, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, encourages that we should remember at all time. What is the Easter period? It is the period we remember the death, the suffering and the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. What will be the significance of his suffering, his death, unto our salvation? The Lord God Almighty will bring us messages that will rekindle fresh fire in our heart in Jesus' name. We would like to take a hymn now. We we acknowledge that you may have a series of hymnas with you, but the song we are taking is Jesus Only. Jesus Only is our message. Jesus, all our team shall be. Jesus, we lift up. We lift up Jesus ever. Jesus Only, we will see. Jesus Only is our message. Jesus for our team shall be We will lift up Jesus ever Jesus only we will see Jesus only Oh, we 
joined us onto this meeting by the grace of God. We appreciate your coming wherever you are joining us from. Those of you within Nigeria and those of you outside the shores of Nigeria, the Lord bless your coming. This is the time for us to listen to the counsel of God concerning this period of Easter as we celebrate. Our first message for this Easter retreat is titled the person of Jesus the person of Jesus we invite every one of you to settle down properly take up your Bibles your writing instruments as we are going to hear the Lord speak to us about Jesus the person of Jesus our guest speaker on this program is our brother brother Bile Akoni Lord we are asking release and reveal yourself to us. Come among us, Lord, and do a new thing in the lives of your people. 
walk in our midst, oh God, touch us in our needs, in our areas of needs. Visit us particularly. Do deep things and eternal things in our lives. Thank you, Father. And thank you, God, for these few days together we are praying that there will be days with you. There will be days of encounter with you. There will be days of engagement with God. And there will be days of an outpouring of the Spirit of God upon us as a people and upon this land. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. I would like you to turn, take your Bibles, and let's read Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. I'll read from verse 12. I'll read it up to verse 29. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of saints, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones <coughs> or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For he pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now as he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, granted and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have had, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, I am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Verse 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. As we read that passage, there are several, several things that is coming. But the only matter that is very, very crucial and very, very compulsory 
for me tonight to look at is Jesus. The person of Jesus. Who is this Jesus? What is the peculiarity of Jesus? What is the glory of Jesus? Why is Jesus central? Central in God's purpose for mankind? Why is Jesus Christ not just like any other? Not just like any other leader? It's not just like any other prophet? Why is Jesus Christ the center of everything that God wants to do in any place, in any man, in any life? You will remember that Peter stood up after the day of Pentecost and he began to speak and the religious leaders were very, very upset. They were annoyed. In fact, they called them and said, you must not preach or teach in this name again. Oh, Peter stood up and said, be it known unto you. Be it known unto you that there is no name under heaven by which any man can be saved apart from this name, Jesus. For this Jesus is the stone which you builders have rejected, but it has now become the chief of the cornerstone. Hallelujah. Paul was writing to Corinthians. He said, for there is no other foundation that can be laid apart from that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, so, but in this particular chapter, Colossians, we will want to spend a bit of time tonight, and I said just a bit of time because it's not possible to speak exhaustively about the personality of Jesus Christ. It's not possible. He's inexhaustible. He is the Lord that no matter how you look at him, no matter how you study him, no matter how you press to know him, you always find him new every morning. You will also find him always, all the time, fresh. Because he is the bright and the morning star. Now, that scripture began by saying, giving thanks to the Father who has made us meet or who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, when the Bible begins to draw our attention and say, look, let's give thanks unto the Father who has made us meet, who has made us qualified, who has made us, brought us up to the point where we could be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And how did he do it? He delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us. Another version said, he has conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear son, of the son of his love. The father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control, out of the dominion of darkness, and he has transferred us into the kingdom of his dearly beloved son. Now, that scripture says, we must give thanks to the Father who has qualified us, who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Now, just one statement before I, I leave it. 
let us note that no man by human effort can qualify himself to be a partaker of God's inheritance. Listen, no man by hard work by any contribution by any sweat of his own face or by any particular diligence can qualify himself to become a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. It's only because when God wants to help a man, when God wants to bring you to himself, when God wants you to be part and parcel of his inheritance, he has to make you qualified. The scripture says, our sufficiency is not of ourselves, but it's of God, who has made us able. Everybody who has ever been saved, or who has ever experienced the grace of God, you need to do so with a thankful heart. You need to thank God because if it were by power, you will be nowhere. If it were by wisdom, you will have been lost. If it were by money, oh God, how much money will you give in exchange for your soul? The Bible says if a man were to gain the whole world, it was not sufficient to buy a soul. The value of a soul the truth of the matter is that it has no value. It is invaluable. Nothing can pay for it. Nothing can be a worthy exchange for your soul. There's nothing. Nothing. Nothing on earth. Nothing in heaven qualifies for a soul. But we thank God. The Bible says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers that we sit here before God, that we can be part of the word of God, that we can be part of the family of God, we need to do so with, thanks, with thankful hearts. We need to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing me to where I am. There are many that have done all they know how to do, and yet they are lost. There are thousands and even millions that were putting forward their own way of salvation, their own way of making themselves right, unfortunately, it will never meet God's standard. If God does not see what he's looking for in a man's life, there's nothing that can impress God with what you are. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us. He has rescued us. Another version used the word rescued. He has rescued us from the power of darkness, from the control of darkness, from the dominion of darkness, and he has conveyed us. He has transferred us. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, who is this son? And you will begin from that verse 14. All of you, please begin from verse 14. If you have carried Old King James, you will have known that the end of verse 13 in your Bible did not come with a full stop. You will have seen that it comes with a full colon, which means that from that point, the Holy Spirit was only going to explain, to give further insight, further revelation onto who is this son? Who is Jesus? Who is this Jesus? So you will see full colon at the end of that verse. Even when you read verse 14, you, you don't see full stop yet. When you go to verse 15, you don't see full stop yet because it was a continuous a continuous unveiling 
of who the son is. Now, let's quickly study that as we go on tonight. Now, the Bible said, in whom we have redemption. Through the blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Brothers and sisters, I wanted to mark that very quickly. It is only in Jesus that we have what? Redemption. Through his blood. Even the forgiveness of our sins. What would that mean? What is redemption? Redemption is that act of God that bought back that which was lost. That which was becoming hopelessly destroyed. Only in Christ Jesus can a soul that is already damaged by the power of sin be restored. Listen carefully to me. Only in Christ Jesus can a life that has been battered by the power of darkness be brought back unto restoration. There is no other place there is no other thing and there is no religion anywhere that actually restores and redeems a soul from destruction. In whom we have redemption. My brother, it doesn't matter how many years the devil spoilt your life. In Christ Jesus, there can be redemption. Sometimes they have been wayward. Somebody may be wayward for the first 30 years of his life. And he has squandered everything that anybody could have referred to as good about him. But when he comes to Jesus, there is redemption. There is a restoration of that life as if it has never been spoiled before. It is only in Christ Jesus that we have redemption through the blood. And First Peter chapter 1 says, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation from the empty way of life received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot that's the first thing we are saying in Christ in whom we have what? redemption let me quickly emphasize that redemption is not possible by paying money. You can never redeem your soul or the soul of your child by paying anything. That we know that we were not redeemed by what? By corruptible things such as silver and gold. For as much as you know that our redemption was not made possible by corruptible things such as silver and gold. From our vain way of life that we have inherited from our fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. It is only in Christ Jesus that you have redemption. It's only because Jesus went to Calvary and shed his blood that a sinner like me can be redeemed. 
Let me say to you, sin brings a permanent damage to any man's life. Sin, even though so many people do not understand the power and the effect of sin, so they play around with it. But let me inform you, every time sin comes into a man's life, sin comes to damage it. Sin comes to give it a very terrible, irrecoverable blow. Sin comes to destroy. It comes to cut a man short. And I want to inform you that all over, once you have committed sin, sin will stand against you everywhere you go. Sin is terrible that it leaves you with a blemish. You may forget everything else, but sin will stay on your conscience for life. Water does not wash away sin. There is no bleach that can bleach away the stain and the guilt of sin from the heart of a man. Even if he pretends to forget and say, well, let's not talk about it. When the reality comes, all your sins that you have committed will just be streaming before your eyes. When the time comes, your sin will find you out. Whereas, you may take five minutes to commit sin. Fifty years is not enough to undo the effect of sin. If it is not in Christ Jesus, sin will remain with a man's conscience Forever. The memory of sin can never be wiped off. And I want to inform you, even good works, philanthropy does not counsel sin. There are people that have misbehaved, they have, they have, they have gone all over, they have killed they have made money out of very, very dubious means. And so they now came. They want to set up a hospital to be treating people as if that will undo the sin that they have committed. No. Some people wanting redemption from their sins. They think if I build a church or I build a community, a community facility, and people are using it that that we make do that we that we take away the consciousness of their sin no way if you were involved in fornication years ago this many years now and Jesus has not yet redeemed you from sin the truth of the matter is that every day of your life. Whenever you see the man, you remember. Whenever you pass through that place, it comes back to you. In fact, any time, listen to me, you have now married, you have married, and you now have a child. Whenever your daughter is misbehaving, your daughter is now 18, and she's going out, and a boy is running after her, Anytime you want to talk to her, say, you want to call her Cecilia. Why are you doing this? Before you will finish that statement, something will hook your throat and say, what of you? When you were like her, what did you do? You see, sin can never, never leave a man unless he has experienced redemption.
The consciousness of sin, the guilt of sin, the power of sin is so deliberating upon a man's life that it stays for years. Only in Christ Jesus can the blood that was shed at Calvary actually take away the stain of sin. And unless the blood comes upon the stain of your sin, it remains unobliterated. It remains permanent. And for years, for years, for decades, it continues to speak against you. But thank God that in Jesus, we have redemption. Through the blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says, if God were to mark iniquity, who among you will stand? But because Christ Jesus offered his life as a ransom for our redemption, he offers his life, he shed his blood, and God said, whenever I see the blood, I will pass over you. My brother, my sister, if not for the blood of Jesus Christ, the accuser of the brethren, Satan, will have dealt with you completely. He will have continued to trouble your life. He will never have allowed you to have a breathing space because he never plans for you to have rest. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. Why must I recommend Jesus Christ to you? Let me inform you now. He is only the one that can redeem a battered life. He is only the one that can redeem a damaged life. He is the one that can restore and bring back to shape that which was destroyed. It is only in him that there is hope for a man that had misused his life before. If you are sitting here, and you say, is there any hope for me? I want to say to you, there is hope, but only in Jesus. If you are asking a question, and say, brother, do you think my life can be changed? Do you think my life can continue? Do you think I can, I can have a hope for a better future? I will say to you, yes, but only in Jesus. Your hope is not in education. Your hope is not in your beauty treatment. Sometimes you have damaged your life before. Now you want to be a sweet 16. Impossible. Impossible. Even when you pretend, you pretend so well. Every time you stand before the mirror, even the mirror, your own mirror, your mirror says to you, but this is what you are hiding. Sometimes you try to shake your head and get some more pomade, some more uh, powder, some other bleach just to cover everything and do like this. But something in you say, but you are a liar. Only in Jesus, when you come to Jesus, that he brings restoration. It is only in him you have redemption. And my friends, redemption is not possible by paying money. Redemption is not possible even by giving an offering. If anybody says, okay, just close your eyes, bring an offering, then you'll be redeemed. He's deceiving you. He loves your money. He does not love your soul. That we know that we were not redeemed by such things as corruptible things like silver or gold. We are only redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. The Lamb without blemish. This night, who is this Jesus? He is in whom we do what? We have redemption. Now I am bold to tell you 
No matter how wayward a man's life is, if it comes to Jesus, there is redemption. If your marriage has, has, has suffered a lot of battering, there's a lot of accident in your marriage, when you come to Jesus, there is redemption. If you have spent much of your years in confusion to such a point that you yourself don't even know where to begin or where to start again. When you come to Jesus, there is redemption. Now, what is redemption? What is redemption? What does it mean to be redeemed? To be redeemed means to be brought back to shape. Those of you that have studied computer, there is something they used to talk. They said, do you want to restore to factory setting? Is there something like that in your computer? To restore back to what? Factory setting. If you click that thing, what you are saying is that they should reformat the hard disk. They should do. They should take everything away and bring it back to what it used to be before it was ever used. Whereas a computer attempts that can be reset to factory setting, but it depends on how long you have used it. Even when you click that thing, it doesn't return again because the hardwares are no more fresh. But I want to tell you that when you come to Jesus, in him there is redemption. And redemption means restoration to the factory setting. When you come to Jesus, it, it brings you back to the fresh newness. In fact, in redemption, God takes away your old records. And he opens a new file for you as if you have never seen before. He begins with this idea for if any man being Christ is what? It's a new creation. Whole things have what? Have passed away. Behold, how many things have become new? All things have become new. In whom we have what? Redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. But there is one thing I wish to note here. And it is that little phrase in that verse 14. In whom. It is only in Christ that we have redemption and we have the forgiveness of sins. Outside Christ, you only have crisis. If you are not in Christ, what, where, are, where are you, please? You are in crisis. You will have crisis. Every man that is not in Christ, listen to me, even though they are professors, they are in crisis. The king that is not in Christ is in crisis. The prince that is not in Christ Jesus, where is he? He's in crisis. The medical doctor that is not in Christ Jesus, you might think he's doing something where, no, 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 if you get close to him, that man is in crisis. Even though he appears to be highly honored in the society, but he's in crisis. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. It has to be in him. The only place where your life can be restored to factory setting is just to come to Christ. Stop struggling with it. Stop going up and down here and there. Come to him. He said, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll do what? I will give you rest. Let me go on quickly because all I'm doing tonight, I just want you to meet him. He is 
This is verse 15 now. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. What does that mean? Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creation. He is the exact likeness of the unseen God. He is the visible representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Brothers and sisters, I want you to catch this quickly. Jesus is the exact likeness. Is the visible expression of the invisible God. No man can see God until you see Jesus. No man can know God and know him practically unless you know Jesus. I hear many people say they are worshipping God, they are worshipping God. You cannot worship God. Whom you have never known until you come to Jesus. Any activity, any program, any gathering that does not point you directly to Jesus is a waste of your time. Hebrews chapter 1, I want someone from this side now to read for me. Now can you read either New King James or any version you carry? Hebrews 1. And I want you to read verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. Yes. What are you reading, sir? All right, go ahead. The Bible says, God, in time past, in diverse ways, he spoke to us by the prophets, but now, in these last days, he has spoken to us. By who? By his son. Jesus is God's message for our day. There is no other message that is important apart from Jesus. Why? He is the image of the invisible God. He is the exact, in fact, the way Hebrews put it, he said, he is the brightness of his glory. He is the express image of his person. Everything that God the Father is, Jesus made it so clear and so plain. So if you want to know God, all you need to look for is Jesus. If you want to experience God in any way, God has put everything about himself. He has put it in Christ Jesus. The Bible said, it pleased the Father that all fullness would dwell in Christ Jesus. So friends, why is Jesus central? It's because there is nothing of God that is outside of Jesus. You cannot discard Jesus and find God. Please take note of that now. You cannot turn away from Jesus and say you are turning to God. You are wasting your time. You will not see God. 
And there is nothing again in the hand of God that he has not put in the hand of Jesus. Actually, the Bible says God loves the Son and he has put all things in his hands. All things, be it in heaven, be it on earth, we are going to read that very soon now, had been put in his hands. In fact, according to Hebrews chapter 1, he is the one that upholds all things by the word of his power. When you come to Jesus, you are simply coming unto the essence, the essence of God. The reality of God the Father is in Christ. The express expression of the Father is Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is God's answer. Honestly speaking, if you ever saw God, if it's possible that you came and you saw God, and if God wanted to talk to you at all, He will only point you to His Son, Jesus. God has nothing more to say outside Jesus. All that the Father will do, He has done it in Christ. So each time you came to Jesus, and if you have ever met Jesus sincerely, you will hear him say, I am my Father. We are one. He who has sent me has sent the Father. Hallelujah. Somehow I meet certain people, they say, we respect God, but we don't respect Jesus. I say, that is a total confusion. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know what you are talking about entirely. That is why all other religion that does not take Jesus as the Lord is a waste of time. He is the exact, exact, exact likeness of the unseen God. He is the visible representation of the invisible and he is the firstborn of all creation. Let me ask you. Does it happen in Swat, among the Swatis that the firstborn of any family, especially if it's the firstborn son, is the heir? Eh? Is that how it happens? Oh, please talk to me. I need to learn the culture. If you are the firstborn son in a family, are you the heir? Of your father. And that everything. Will be handed over to you. And you are the one. Who now decides. To give to your junior brothers. Or sisters. Whatever you feel. Does it happen like that? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to inform you. That Jesus. Is the firstborn. Of all creation. He's the firstborn. And by that. Please hear me very well. He is the heir. Of all things. That's why Hebrew said. He is the heir. Of all things. Because he is the firstborn. Of all creation. What I'm saying to you now is this. He will take first. And when he has taken first, he is the one who decides what anyone else can get. If you don't line up with Jesus, you get nothing. No, no, I'm very serious. If you stand outside or you stand in opposition to Jesus, you get nothing. When you come to Jesus, 
You are simply coming to the right source of all things. He is the heir of all things because he is the firstborn of all creation. Of all creation. So everything else came by him. I better go on reading so that I can move on quickly. Verse 15 and 16 is where we are now. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created through him by him and for him by him how many things were created all things were created John chapter 1 will somebody quickly confirm that for us from John 1 in the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was present originally with God. Mm. All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. Are you hearing that? Repeat it again. Verse 3. All things were made and came into existence from him. All things were made and came into existence from him. Through him and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. Without him was not even one thing. Excuse me. The Bible said there is not one thing that was made that has not been made by him. As you are sitting here now, I want you to know that everything about you was by him. Even when you have decided not to recognize him, he owns you. I need to tell you that. Even when you are shaking your head as if you are intelligent, he's asking a question. Does he know his base? Does he understand that everything inside him, I put it there. There was nothing that was made, that was not made by him. Let's agree together now that there is nothing under the heaven or in heaven, visible or invisible, that was made, that was not made by him. All men were made by him. All angels were made by him. Even demons, principalities, powers, all oceans, all the seas, all the mountains were made by him. And nothing was made that he did not make. Everything that was made was made by him. But now listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God very quickly. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Even things that are not visible to you he made them. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Now I want you to know that there is nothing. No matter how high anything is that is higher than him. Because he is the one who put it together. All principalities, all dominions, all thrones, all powers, they were made by him. But look at the word of God. All things were created through him 
and for him. I want you to see the last line there. For him. What's the meaning of for him? When they use the word for him, what does that mean? It was for him. It belongs to him. Tell somebody by your side, say, whether you like it or not, you were made for him. Yes. 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 If you are not living for him, you have not started living. That's the truth. Let me tell you. Some of you are living for money. Some of you are living for the devil. You are living for a thief. You are living for a man who has no particular investment in your life. You need to be asking, what benefit has Jesus got from your life thus far? You are now 35 years. And for 35 years, Jesus has not eaten anything tangible from your life. Some of you, you are now 50 years. And when you look down 50 years, everything else has used you but the Lord. You are now exhausted. And you are almost totally perforated. And Jesus, who lent you life, who crafted you when you were nothing from the cradle, is still waiting. Say, I'm still waiting whether there's any useful thing I can derive from this man's life. Because you were created for him, my friend. Until you live for him, the very reason why you are created is already in jeopardy. Do you know that in the book of Revelation, when the elders were singing, they said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, power, adoration, for thine they were. And to you, they were all created. Friends, if you sleep into death and you have not lived for him, friends, your total existence is a waste. And so your eternity will be totally hopeless. You'll be one that will say, here is a man with life. And he never, never spent that life for the reason why he was created. And if I tell you the truth is this. Everything else you do with your life and it's not for him has no eternal consequence. No record. I'm telling you now, you need to know it now. All your certificates, they will end here. When we get to eternity, they will not be asking you how many degrees you have. They will only ask a question. How much of your life did you live for him? Who created you? Nobody will recognize you up there by anything else. The only question they are asking is this For whom did you do all this? I gave you life, I gave you intelligence. I gave you opportunities. I gave you positions. I gave you everything that you might live for me. But you squandered it all. For who did you live your life? For who did you expend your opportunities? For who did you, did you 
did you invest all the endowment of grace that will put in your life? Brothers, any life that is lived and is not for him is a waste. I tell you again, I tell you again, you may live for money. Wake up early in the morning, run everywhere, enter into different contracts, travel far away from your village, looking for money. You fly here, fly there, looking for money. The truth of the matter is that all of that, if it is not for him is a waste. And how terrible it is that you, your eternal soul, will stand in eternity with only one statement. This one was given life to live, but wasted it. And for eternity, you are called to question why did you waste the life we gave you? My friend, my brothers, my sisters, you were created for him. It's okay if you understood that you were created by God. But it's important for you to know that you were created for who? For him, for Jesus. Until you take your bearing to say, Jesus, now my life, unless you are the one enjoying it, you are the one using it for your own pleasure and for your own purpose, then I'm existing almost for nothing. It was in him that all things were created in heaven and earth. Things seen and things unseen. Whether thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, all things were created and they exist through him by service, intervention and for him. Let's go now to verse 17. He is before all things and in him how many things consist? All things. Can you read that for me from living, I mean, good news? Where's the good news Bible here? There was one good news I saw. Yes. Stand up with a good voice and read good news. Quickly. Christ existed before all things. And in union with him. And it is in union with him. All things have their proper place. Oh my God. Did you hear the Bible? You are not hearing it. Read it again. Christ existed before all things. Christ existed before all things. And in union with him, yes. all things have their proper place. When you are not in union with Jesus Christ, you are misplaced. Let's hear the word of God. Only in union with Jesus Christ is everything having their own proper place. Until you unite with Christ, until you get your bearing with Christ, you can never have your proper place in life. May the Lord give you understanding tonight. Until Christ takes the center stage in your life, everything will, nothing will have their proper place. Who has another version to read that for me? Maybe Living Bible, or, or, you want to read Amplified? Right, read Amplified. Yes, sir. It is in him that everything consists. It is in him that everything cohere and everything find cohesion 
and their head together. When Christ is not in the center of your life, things are misplaced. Please hear me. Are you hearing me? Things are scattered. They will never find their proper place. Until Christ comes into a man's life, that man's life is disorganized. Until Christ finds his space in your life, everything else is misplaced. You know, sometimes you don't understand this. You think you can travel in life without Christ. Sometimes you don't understand this. You think you can just, you can just pay lip service to Christ and be doing your own life the way you like. You don't understand. Nothing is yet in their proper place until Christ takes his place. My brother, are you hearing me? As a young man, don't think you are going far. If Christ is not the foundation of your journey, your journey will end in shambles. Don't get into marriage until Jesus Christ has taken his place in your life. That marriage will not fit. I'm not saying you will not wait. You can wait. But go and meet all those ones. Let them tell you the misplacement that has happened in their lives. Because Christ was not given his proper place. One version says, it is in union with him. He said, Christ is the first principle of all creation. Is the first principle of all scheme of creation. And it is in union with him that everything finds their bearing. I would like to ask you to consider this as we pray tonight. I don't want you to be religious. I want you to be serious. Sometimes people like to just be religious. No! Don't be religious. Face the reality. Where is Christ in the scheme of your affairs? Where is Christ? Don't just talk. Don't, I don't like that. I want you to be real. I want you to answer this question. Where is Christ in all that you are doing? Where is Christ in all that you are shouting and running up and down? Where is Christ in this career that you are running after? Where is Christ? Can you trace what you are doing to Christ? Can you boldly say this thing is emanating from Christ who is the center of my life? Or you just want to mention Christ in order to quench your conscience? When you have done everything else. And I said so that they will not say I'm not religious. You just want to put Jesus name somewhere. No. It won't work. Christ. He is. One before all else began. And it is in union with him. That everything finds their proper place. This is not just that I'm preaching to you. I'm not preaching to you. I'm telling you the truth. 
If you don't believe this, you will live to experience it. If Christ is not in place in your life, wait. Many things about you will never find their proper place. And you may go on for the rest of your life looking for cohesion. Nothing will be cohesion. Everything will scatter. You will enter into business, they will dupe you. When you will have spent your useful years, you will wake up to discover that you are reaping nothing. And many, many people at their old age, it's only that it is too late to begin again. They wonder what they live for. Some died out of frustration. Some thought that if they worked so well for government, it would give them peace. Unfortunately, they are frustrated people today. I want to tell you, if it is not for Christ you lived, you have lived for nothing. If it is not for Christ you expended your life, you have wasted it. And if Christ is not in the proper place, in the first place in your life, sincerely speaking, if he is not there before everything else, nothing else will find their proper place. Actually, if I want to tell you the whole truth in my heart, life only begins to find meaning when Christ comes in. Your journey in life only begins to find direction when Christ steps in. Your destiny only finds correct definition when Jesus Christ has been given space to do his work in your heart. He is the head of the body. That is a very strong issue for me tonight, but I want to, I want to move away from it because I cannot say to death. He is the head of the body, the church. I know there are many people that are claiming. They are claiming positions. Some call themselves different titles, preeminent, prelate, all kind of big, big titles. And they would like to sit on top of the church as if they are the owners. Some say, I'm founder, I'm president. I'm sorry to inform you. Sorry for you. He is the head of his church. He is the beginning. And he is the firstborn from the dead. That in all things, Jesus may have the preeminence. My brothers, it doesn't matter how, how many people are making big, big name. Let it be clear to you that Jesus, Jesus is the head and is in charge. If you do not link up with him, it doesn't matter who else you know. You will be irrelevant as far as eternity is concerned. One of the things that has affected me in my life as I wanted to serve God is to come to recognize that he is the head. He is the coordinator of all things. What he has not approved does not have approval. What we cannot see in Jesus Christ has no authentic value. You may follow popular men of God, 
But they are doing things that Jesus Christ never did. You are wasting your life. It may appear as here, yeah, yeah, in our own church, in our own church. I don't know your own church. He is the head of the body, the church. And whatever Jesus has not said, even if your big man is saying it, is only making empty noise. He carries no water. This night, I came to note that he is the head of his body, the church. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn. Oh, you need to go to Revelation where Jesus began to introduce and say, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the first. I am the last. I am he that was dead and is alive again. I am he that liveth forevermore. I am he that has the key of hell and of death. I am the one that has the keys of David. When I open, no man can shut. And when I shut, no man can open. That's Jesus. Because he is the head, he is in control. He is in charge. He is the one. If I read from Amplified Bible, it said, he is also the head of his body, the church. See, he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead. So that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place. Stand first and be preeminent. Friends, as I stop here tonight, because all I want you to note is who is this Jesus that wants to live in you? Who is this Jesus that wants to walk in our lives? Verse 19 of that scripture says, It pleased the Father. It has pleased the Father. That in him, in Christ Jesus, all the fullness should do what? Should do well. It has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection of powers and attributes should dwell in him permanently. Permanently. Not for a while. Jesus is the Lord not for 10 years. He's the Lord for how long? Forever. Jesus, God is pleased that in him should all fullness dwell permanently. Forever. Forever. He is Lord forever. He will never be outdated. He will never be outfashioned. He will never be outmoded. He will never, never, never. You can never call him former president. All others come to go. He has come to stay. All others have a name for a while. His name is forever. His name is ever glorious. His authority is without end. And let me inform you, of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. There is no time when Jesus will cease to be the Lord. He is the Lord. Not only for now, but forever. If you don't receive him now, you will still meet him. Are you hearing me? If you do not receive him now, what did I say? You will still meet him. He's the beginning, he's the end. He's the first, he's the last. 
when he calls on you and say, my son, open your heart to me. And say, no, 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 no. Let me inform you. Even that your heart that you are not opening to him belongs to him. And you are going nowhere with it. But the only problem is that when the final day comes, you will give account of why you rob the owner of his own thing. And then eternity will become your own forever to pay a debt. Right? But he stands missed. In whom we have redemption. In whom we have forgiveness of sin through the blood. In whom we have the mercy of God. By him grace has come to us. The Bible said the law came by Moses. But by Jesus Christ, grace and truth comes. Tonight, there is grace. Tonight, there is forgiveness. Tonight, there is redemption. I tell you, it doesn't matter how many years you wasted. He is willing to redeem you and restore you to factory setting. Going to give you a new beginning. Why does he do that? Because of who he is. Because of who he is. Inexhaustible. Out of his fullness. We have all received grace upon grace. Upon grace upon grace. Nobody can finish Jesus. Are we, am I communicating with you? There is nothing about you. That can exhaust him. When he has blessed you, when he has blessed you, he has only done so out of his riches and glory. He does not even feel it. So you can't say, it's because my problem is too much, that's why I ran away from Jesus and I'm going somewhere else where they can help me. Who else can help you when all fullness dwells in him? To who else? Shall we go? Peter said. Peter said, where else? You are the one that has the words of eternal life. All others, they derive whatever they carry from you. Where are we going? May the Lord, who comes in this meeting this week, I mean these two days or three days, may he appear to you. May something eternal happen in your own life. In this meeting, he who created you and for whom you were actually fashioned, if you have not allowed him, oh my God, you have only wasted your existence. And why will he become your judge finally? Is because he is the one that has the right. The Bible says all judgment have been committed to the son. I want to request you tonight. But what is critical is that that same Jesus in whom there is redemption, in whom there is forgiveness, in whom there is salvation stands in our midst tonight and says yes. I created you. I knew where you are coming from. When there was nothing, I knew you. And I was preparing you for my purpose. How long will you run away from the hand that crafted you? How long will you be running from the hand that you can never bypass? His hand is so long, you can never bypass it. If he has not caught you, it's not that his hand cannot reach you. He's only giving you time and space to explore yourself if you will be reasonable. But I'm hearing him say, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. I will eat with him. And he 
with me. We'd like to stop here and ask you to bow your heart as we pray together tonight. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you even this day for the privilege of having Jesus, the persons that have made us partaker of the heavenly blessing. Thank you, Father. We worship you. There is no any other way by which we can be partaker of heavenly blessing, if not of the persons of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we adore you. Thank you for giving us yourself. Thank you for revealing, relieving, releasing yourself unto us. Lord, we worship you. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this personality, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We adore your holy name. We praise your holy name. Father, from the depth of our heart, we thank you for this sacrificing your name for us. Thank you for your name is credit worthy. Thank you, Father. Lord, we worship you. For there is no any other means by which we can be partaker of the heavenly blessing aside this personality, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we adore you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is not by religion. It's not by status. It's by this holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We exalt you. Brethren, I want us to still pray again that this Jesus is the only one that has been given to us that by which we can receive redemption from our sin. There is nothing that can redeem us from the sin and from the clusters of the devil. There is nothing that can redeem us from the power of darkness. Jesus is the only personality that has been given to us, that released himself to us, to make us to, to be redeemed from self and sin. Brethren, let us thank God for this Jesus. Let's worship him. Let's adore him. The only way we can partake and get delivered from power of sin is through the redemption that Jesus brought to us. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, I want us to pray again and cry unto the Lord. There is no any other way by which our sin can be removed. There is no any other name by which we can be saved under the head than the, on, the, on earth beside the name of Jesus. Can you cry unto the Lord tonight? Can you cry unto the Lord today that Lord Jesus, I come unto you. Lord, wash me. Wash me by your blood. Wash me. It is only the name of Jesus that can remove our sin. The blood is shed on the cross of Calvary no means by which we can be removed, we can be redeemed from our sin, from self. It is only by this name, Jesus. Oh Lord, unto you we have come in your name, asking you this day that you will wash away our sin. Lord, forgive us all our sin. Forgive us all our shortcoming. We come by your name. We come by this credit name of Jesus. Even today, Lord Jesus, wash us from from our sin, wash us from our iniquity. Oh Lord, we look up unto you. Father, this day, cleanse us from all our sin. Cleanse us from all our sin. There is no salvation in any other, in any other place. There is no name by which a man can be saved. Only by the name of Jesus. We come by this name, Jesus. Even this day, Lord, wash away our sin. Wash away our sin. Forgive us all our sin, cleanse us from all the guilt of sin, For, cleanse us from all our wrong. Father, we beg you, this day we come by this name. We come in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Take away our sin, wash away our sin, our infirmity in your name. Lord, we are come unto you, Father. 
forgive us in your name. Wash us by your blood. Wash us by your blood. Also, we are going to pray, brethren. We have heard that Jesus is the only name given to us. It is only means by which we can please the Father. Can we beg the Lord that the Lord tonight, that Jesus will be the lifestyle we will live according to the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 that we read this morning, uh, this day in this message, we are going to plead with the Lord, the Lord that it is only by the life of Jesus we will live. It is only in him the Father is being pleased. There is no way we can be pleased even by, by the Father. Only by this name Jesus, only by this life Jesus, can we beg the Lord that Lord this day help us, oh God, to embrace your life. Help us to live by your life. Help us to walk by your life. There is not going to be any other means any longer that Jesus will grow in our life. Jesus will live his life in our life. Brethren, cry unto the Lord. You have gone away from Jesus. You have been told by any by by by, by by several other people as if there is any other alternative by which we can be accepted by the Lord. Yeah, by God. It's only by the name of Jesus we are accepted by the Lord. Tell the Lord this day, Lord, unto you, Lord, I have come. Lord Jesus, grow down in me. Live your life in me. Lord, walk in me. Speak in me. Lord, everything about my life, let it be you, Lord Jesus. I submit my life unto you. Direct my my life, guide my life, in Lord Jesus, unto you I have come. The reason for this Easter is Jesus. Oh Lord, I have come again today unto you, Lord. Lord Jesus, be pleased. Lord, please to live your life in me. Please to live your life in me. Help me not to live any other life. Help me not to live any other life aside this life, Jesus. Lord, I look up unto you today, Father. Lord Jesus, live your life in me. Oh, Jesus Christ, grow down in me, and all things else receive. My life be daily, nearer from sin be daily free. Lord Jesus, grow down in me. Live your life in me. Oh Lord, that I will live for you. I will live for you. I will live for you. I will not live any, for any other reason again. The reason for this day is Jesus. Oh, any other life you live that is not the life for Jesus is a counterfeit life. We can, we, the only way we can be accepted by the Lord, by God, is to live by this life, Jesus. Let my life be only only lost in you. Brethren, pray this day. Talk to the Lord. The reason for this day is that Jesus may be seen. Jesus may be known. Jesus may be heard. Lord, today that Jesus will be seen in me. Jesus will be known in me. Jesus will be heard in me. Father, Lord, let it not be me that it shall be Jesus. The hope of glory is Jesus. Father, this, this day I plead with you, oh God, live your life in me. Can we beg the Lord, whatever that is living his life in, in us that is not Jesus, can we say Lord, evacuate it today. Evacuate it in the name of Jesus. Evacuate every other life that, have, that, uh, that, have, that is dwelling in me, that I make my, 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 my tabernacle is dwelling. Lord, evacuate that life. Oh, evacuate that life. My life is for Jesus, not for any other thing else. Lord, this day I've come on to you. I have come unto you. I, the, the song we have just rendered, we had the, in that song, the hymn that was just rendered to us, that Jesus is only our message. Jesus is our life. Jesus is our being. There is no any other life that we are asked to live. The only life that is acceptable by God, it is only the life of Jesus. I can only be acceptable by this life, Jesus. Aside this life, there is no any sacrifice that can make me to be acceptable. It's only to 
to believe in the finished work of Christ. Can you beg the Lord? I receive grace to embrace Jesus in all I do, in all I say, in whatever things, in every area of my life, that it shall be you alone. Lord, this day I look up unto you, dwell, live in my life. Lord, let my life please you always. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. I we also add from that message that several of us, we have also, particularly those of us that we are pastor, we have made people to, we have misled several people in that we have told them that there are other means by which we can be redeemed. We cannot be redeemed by money. We cannot be redeemed by any other sacrifice. The only way that by which we can be redeemed is by this personality, is by this name Jesus. Can you beg the Lord, you pastor, that you are there, that you have even talked to your member that the redemption, they need to pay the redemption offering, they need to do a particular sacrifice. Why are you deranging people? Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me today. Lord, have mercy on my ignorance. Forgive me, oh God. Pastors, that we are leading congregation and we have we have we have made the sacrifice of Jesus of none and void by by preaching our message that is not according to the word of God, that is not according to the finished work of Christ, that is contrary to the finished work of Christ. Let beg the Lord that the Lord will show you mercy, that the Lord will have mercy on you. Lord, I plead for my pastor friend, I plead for my pastor brother that have misled several congregations, even Telling them what is not correct, what is not biblical, telling them about the redemption offering. Oh Lord Jesus has redeemed all. Is our redemption. Father, we beg of you this day for mercy. Have mercy, oh God. Several people have been misled and they have crucified Christ the second time. Lord, we plead, oh God, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even this day. Day, we cannot conclude this prayer for those of you that you have not met this man of Calvary, you have not encountered this Jesus, you see the need now that the way you are living your life, you have not acknowledged, you have not embraced Jesus into your life. Can you, if you are ready this day, I am inviting you to Jesus, the person of Jesus, the old Jesus represent, he represents your redemption, he represents your healing, he represents your head, everything about life is, in the Bible says, in, in him the fullness of God consists. He said by him and for him we are created and by him we are Lord, we are going to beg the Lord those of you that you have not given your life to Jesus I call on you today all of you that you are listening to us even today we are saying come and give your life to Jesus will you submit your life unto him will you tell him Lord I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior I accept you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life Will you receive Jesus today? Will you give your life to Jesus today? Lord, come into my life. Be the Lord of all in my life. Rule in my life. Oh God, that I will live my life for you. Oh, as you are the one that created me, I also submit my life to live my life for you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I welcome you to the family of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be unto your holy name, Lord. We are grateful because you have had us. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful unto you. Even this day, how you came to us to reveal who Jesus is to us. Thank you. Before now, several of us, we don't know what Jesus represents, particularly for this day that we are commemorating. The day that Jesus died, suffered, died, and resurrected. This season. We are very grateful for us to know that the reason for this season is Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this understanding. We thank you for this word that you have brought unto us. Father, this day we are begging of you. Lord, you say that we can only be partaker of heavenly blessing. It is only Jesus that has made us the partaker. And without Jesus, we have no inheritance in God. Father, we are grateful because Jesus, the person of Jesus, has brought us into the inheritance with the Father, with the saint in the light. Blessed be unto your holy name. Lord, we thank you that it is through this your name that we have redemption from sin. We have 
have redemption from flesh. We have redemption from the world. We have redemption from the devil. There is no any other sacrifice again by which we can be saved, by which we can please the law. Thank you because it is in you we, that has been made possible for us to please the Father. Oh, there is no any other means, there is no any other religion, there is no any other way by which we can please the Father. It is in Christ Jesus that Father is being pleased. Lord, we are grateful. We worship you. We adore you. We like to thank the Lord for how much he has appeared to us today. See how God, how much God has loved us and with his word and with the prayer our brother just took, we hope that the Lord has indeed greatly blessed you. Let's sit back for these few notices. This program is just beginning, starting today, and we're going to continue the same time tomorrow. Please be on time. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Also, we would like to say you can create uh, an opportunity for people to gather in your environment together so that it will not be you alone. We believe that families can gather together, even churches or congregation for this meeting. Please make effort to gather people around you for tomorrow. Uh, in case of uh, you are in need of help, in case of any one of us that have responded to the message tonight, we would like you to please uh, don't just sleep over it. You may be in need of counseling. You may be in need of discipleship. You may also be in need of further praying. We would like you to take note of the contact that is on your screen right now. We want to thank you for staying true for this meeting. We hope to see you tomorrow. Can we share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.